everyone, welcome back to Kingdom of Loathing. I think it's episode, like, 23 or something. Um, I wasn't going to record today, but today's the Feast of Boris. This holiday honors Boris the Beefy, one of the three mighty archetypal elders who helped shape the kingdom back in the old days. Which, before the days of you are. Boris's capacity for eating was almost as legendary as his capacity for violence. To maintain his barge-like physique, he ate five dozen raw eggs every morning. It's hardly surprising he died not in battle, but from a combination of clogged arteries and salmonella poisoning, to celebrate his memory, citizens of the kingdom gorge themselves on food until they can barely move. So, normally, nice. Normally, our limit is fifteen for food. As you can see there, well, you might be able to see there. Yes, you can. It's now thirty. Our drink limit is still the same, but that's all right. So yeah, we can just we can just eat. You need a lot, in fact. Yeah, you can just keep it going. But I'm going to stop it there because, uh, hey, that's a uh, lot. So what are we doing? Um, we're about to level up, but we can take the travel documents to the travel agency on the desk beach. Um, now, where exactly is that? Is it here? Welcome to the Shore, Inc. Finest relaxation. In the king, uh, finest, jeez, excuse me. Welcome to the Shore, Inc., the finest travel agency in the kingdom of living. Vacations are sure to be the thing for a weary soul when we need a rest and relaxation. Select like a package, pay up, and let us do the rest. So why not do all three? As you're about to talk to the agent, she notices your identification documents and grabs them. Ah, uh, Mr. Abercrombie, welcome. Your travel arrangements have been made. Here are your tickets. You can board your ship at Dock 94. You go to the dock and board the ship, a luxury liner. You're wine and dine for the Vulcan Sea Voyage. And as soon as you disembark, you're shuttled into a stagecoach. Or stagecoach into a shuttle, you're not sure which. After a long and bumpy ride, the stagecoach or shuttle deposits you in the center of a bustling bazaar. You look around to get... Sorry, I'm just checking to see if I'm recording. You look around to get your bearings when you're suddenly grabbed by the shoulders and jerked into a darkened alleyway. A gruff, bearded man emerges from the shadows and speak, speaks. I assume you've come for the diary. Well, here it is. I'm glad to be free of the cursed thing. Already cost me half my fingers, but he could fit to become someone else's problem. Hands you the diary, it fades back in the shadows before you can reply. Then, for no reason, someone hits you in the back of the head with something, knocking you unconscious. You wake up back in your campsite, muddying yourself about how this cloak and dagger nonsense gives you a headache. So let's actually do this. In the desert. Near the end of your relaxing vacation, at the distant land's dude ranch, you decide you're sick of being in the rain, and that it's time to go to the desert. Saddle up a conspicuously unnamed horse and head out. Once you're on the desert, you encounter a creature naked and bestial, eating what appears to be a heart. Hey there, is that a heart? I'll tell you what it is. It's none of your damn business, that's what it is. And he punches you in the stomach. You, of course, retaliate by beating him into a ball. That was one bitter creature, you think to yourself as you head back to the ranch. Is that the same every time? No, it isn't. As you're moseying around the fence that borders the dude ranch, you hear the sound of foot beat, hoof beats coming up the hill. Behind you, you turn around and see a very strange dude heading, indeed heading towards you. He's not running a horse, but you can still hear hooves. As he gets closer, there's a weird little, weird-looking little man following behind him, banging coconut shells to make the sound. Howdy, man greets you. Howdy, say, did you know you don't have a horse? Just some guy behind you banging a couple of coconuts together. Hey, yep, reckon I didn't know that. Where'd you get the coconuts? One of them buzzards you see around these parts drop them. You're skeptical. Where would a buzzard get coconuts? Reckon they migrate, don't they? That's ridiculous, you say. I can't believe we're even doing this tired old nerd routine. <laughs> Here are your words. A coconut-laden buzzard flops away sheepishly. Oh, that's great that they aren't even the same. Check out the gift shop. So these things cost the, the scripts that we've been getting. So we can get a souvenir crate. And we can get other things, too. Oh. Okay, let's open this. Let's open this. I mean, I've got the money, and today I can get the Avengers. Oh, look at that. Two sticks of dynamite. Howdy. Nice, 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 nice. A beach. While wandering along the beaches of the tropical island, you encounter a camp full of teenage half -orcs. Hey, man, one of them says. Welcome to our self-sufficient democratic utopia, man. Are you really self-sufficient, you ask? Well, not really. One of us is to uh, take a trip to the mainland once a week for food, uh, magazines and stuff, you know. 
Huh. Do you at least have a true democracy going? It started out that way, but after a while, the best-looking people sort of took over, so now it's a popularity contest come monarchy. Is it utopia? Oh, yeah, it's totally utopian. What's your secret? Beer, man. Beer. You decide to head back to the mainland right away, otherwise you might never want to leave. Pretty smart move. And they've got it. Large donkey. Alright, the mountain is fierce now. While you're blindly shushing your way down Large Donkey Mountain, you're accosted by a young knoll riding a bicycle. You shout something you can't make out. You ski closer so you hear. Two meat! I want my two meat! He's shouting. He swerves towards you, gets the tip of your ski caught in his bike spokes, and goes flying off the mountain. Whatever, you figure he's better off dead anyway. The dork and his bike had broken your ski, but he managed to make it down the mountain in one ski on one ski and in record time. Let's take a look here. I've got three. So I could get this cheap toaster. Perhaps I shouldn't. AIDS and desert exploration. I'll probably need to come back for that. Ooh, isn't there a thing that I can only use once per day? I think there is. Like a... Oh, yeah, I remember what it is. Um... Remember what it is, but not where it is. But there's a specific item that I, uh... Found and finally decided to use. Oh, I've been wasting all my buffs. Damn it. I'm a fool. What does this do again? It's not for a thing. Oh, it regenerates MP, right? That's fine. That's cool. Uh, pardon me, everyone. I'm an idiot. It's the it's the thing you get from the genies. Tonic gin, here we go. You take the stopper out of the bottle, and a term, German man with no legs drifts out of it and settles his gaze on you. What is my wish ma what is thy wish, master? Uh I wish for you can't wish for more wishes, smart ass, he interrupts. So you can get, you know, one of your main stats, or you can get more money. Or one of those. Hey, we leveled up! Look at that. Look at that indeed. Uh, let's go to the Travel Paradise again, and then the new branch. On your first day, on the first day of your vacation, you're relaxing on the beach, and your daydreams are suddenly interrupted by a guy carrying a big wooden case. Hello, he says. Would you like to buy some car of driftwood animals? You politely decline and enjoy the rest of your day. On the second day of your vacation, you're relaxing on the beach, when suddenly your daydreams are interrupted by a guy carrying a wooden case. Car of driftwood animals? You somewhat more forcefully decline, set him on his way, enjoy the rest of your day. Third day, you're relaxing. Case. Driftwood animals. Scream the man you don't want any. He runs off and you enjoy the rest of your day. On the fourth day, driftwood animals. You beat the man unconscious with one of his own statues, cram him in the pitch, and throw it in the ocean, where it drifts away on the tide. It sounds extra me, but come on, it's full of driftwood. If your judgment of the tides and the position of the stars are right, he'll make it back to land in more than a week. It looks like these are all... Uh, Related to the main stat as well, so this gives me strength. Bring a fist to a bar fight. Your dude ranch tour group takes a ride out to a nearby western style town, and you have lunch in their authentic western saloon. Amusingly, a stage bar fight breaks out for your, the entertainment of the tourists. It's more exciting when someone smashes a sugar glass prop bottle on your head. You had expected audience participation. <laughs> it's a pretty fun fight. Your favorite part is when you punch a guy on the balcony, he smashes through the breakaway railing, and lands on a crash on a pop, prop table below. Later, your tour guide tells you there weren't props or anything, and that was all real. Haha, <laughs> he's a real killer. Oh boy. I just killed a man. Let's get these fuzzy dice. Alright, 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 alright. Now, if only I remembered my alphabet. They twitch and grow and roll of their own, own accord. You decide to name him Tobert. What does Tobert even do? Groovy Plushness is supposed what does it do? Better ask, what doesn't it do? It does all sorts of crazy stuff. Alright. That's cool. That's cool. Um let's read this MacGuffin diary. Oh, hold on. 
This is the diary your father kept during his lifelong search for the Holy MacGuffin. A lot of it's useless, or at least really boring, but he seems to have found a handful of important clues during his search. Your father's handwriting was also inferior and small, small and sloppy. You had forgotten about that. Oh, boy. Jarl's Jury 1. The Holy MacGuffin's resting place is apparently a pyramid buried beside Seaside Town. The Guardians left a clue to its exact location. A wooden model of Seaside Town. A wooden model of Seaside Town hidden in a smaller period, pyramid somewhere in Desert Beach. To unlock the clue, I'll need the key. A legendary staff of Ed. The staff has been broken into three parts and scattered across the kingdom. Once I have retrieved all three pieces, I must find the wooden city using the staff to determine the precise location of the pyramid. Boar 7. Set the hidden temple in the distant woods hold ancient, many ancient secrets. I have reason to believe that part of the staff Ed, is hidden there. Boar 11. Discovered a passage about the temple in a book on ancient religious architecture. It appears to contain notes on some kind of ritual. Significant? The gesture of the elders... Throw your hands in the air and wave them like you do not care. O three vesti manis in air et avwe lemma ikle tu non cotio. Oh, these are all jokes. Haha. Ha. A few times we've been around on shack, so it's not going to happen like that. Let me hear what you. Let me hear you say what this is. We do not. My trail is led to the home of a wealthy seaside town man who apparently possesses the gem of the staff. He refused to see me, but I did discover a note left on a scrap of paper in a book he returned to the picture to the library across the street from the Suzy back alley. It contains, among other things, a fragment of sheet music. Curious. Bill two. My informant has revealed the location of the two halves of the talisman of Namsalat. Is that a is that a palindrome? He the legendary palindrome. Oh. Ha ha. They are currently in the hands of the nefarious Copperhead Brothers, Ron and Shen. Oh, Shen Ron? Is that... Shen was last seen at the Copperhead Club in Seaside Town, while Ron is r rumored to have taken over the Red Army at their Mountain Zeppelin base. Um, I'm pretty sure Red Army is also a DBZ reference, or just Dragon Ball. Password Swordfish. Bill 4. My research has revealed that the Palindome is the last resting place of failed pool shark, Rudolph Saturated Fats. Or at least his pool crew, the staff of fats. Oh, that's another palindrome. <laughs> Widely rumors that it wasn't originally pool crew, but that fat had modified an old sack of found in the Hake store. This explains his pool prowess. Perhaps the cue is actually the shaft of the staff of Ed. Pirate showed me this rubbing. They're not sure where it came from. The bottom is missing. Might be useful. God, a reg nugget, a fat egg. Okay, can we read that again? Yeah, well, I just want to look at the pictures. Yeah, that's a pool cue right there. Yeah, that's uh, that's one of them Pokemons. Interesting. That's a swordfish. God, a red nugget. Interesting. Well, let's head over here. Any luck getting that? Pretty important watch, McCullough, so we'd appreciate you getting rid of that right away. Eventually, we've heard rumors that trouble is brewing on the mysterious island of mystery. Hippies and frat boys are agitating for war. I mean, they've always been a little tense for each other, but it's getting serious. We couldn't be happier. Go over there and make sure the war starts. We don't care how it starts. We don't care who wins. So there's basically no way for you to screw that up, as long as you don't accidentally negotiate a priest accord. Try not to do that. All right. Let's search the hidden town. We were there uh, a couple weeks ago. So let's head back. So to the pirate. Carvin, Craven, Carvin, Raven. Oh boy. Tobert begins to roll. Five. Tobert glares at your opponent menacingly. A calm fills the air. A malevolent Tofurky. Have I read this? This is the wad of gelatinous, theoretically edible muck that has been formed into the shape of a turkey. That won't be bad enough, but it's been animated by some kind of dark mystical energy. You should have recognized its foul scent when you came on board. That's a Star Wars quote. Oh, that reminds me. Oh, what? Seven. Tober twitches, but it's nothing. We got Toferky leg Um, I put the uh, seal, I put the club back on because I was, um, 
I, I put the seal club back on because uh, I can't fight seals without a club. So if I want to go grind the uh, the one guys, I need to have the club on. Turbo gains a pound. Monster attack reduced by one. Interesting. Oh, here we go. You find yourself in what your adventure sense tells you is the exact center of the, center of the temple. Your adventure sense also notices a big door set in the north wall. The door is decorated with a carved stone hemisphere. It is also a small spiral staircase leading downward one corner of the room. And the hallway you came into. That's the thing. Well, let's go down the stairs. The room is empty except for a strange altar at the center. In a pool of diffuse white light coming from the ceiling. Approach it and see that it's covered in a grid of futurist square buttons. What a terrible user interface. Clearly, the people who built the temple have never read any Donald Woman. Press a button at random. Loud grinding noise somewhere above you, and dust begins to fall from the ceiling. Before it hits the ground, beam light of the altar grows in intensity until it simultaneously engulfs and blinds you. When you, your vision comes back, you're outside the temple. Damn. Tobert grows a coating of nasty looking spikes and slams in your phone for three damage. Interesting. Drab Bard. That's another palindrome. And Tobert gained a pound. I seem to just be grinding a little bit here. I guess I could just continue to grind until I get to the, uh, the next thing. Oh, here we go. Exact side of the temple. Big big door set in the north wall. The door is decorated with a ton of wagging stone gargoyle. Small spiral staircase in one corner of the room, and the hallway you came in for. Oh. Trying to figure out how to open the gargoyle, though, but don't have any luck. Grasping astrology, pulled the gargoyle's tongue. Grasp the gargoyle's tongue and pull on it. The eyes light up as electricity courses through your arms and into your brain. It's quite bracing. Well, let's uh, let's go somewhere else. So we've now unlocked this place, the arid, extra dry desert. You're fighting a giant, giant centipede. A giant, giant, giant centipede. Centipedes of loathing appear to be uh, tend to be about two inches long. Giant centipedes are a foot long, and the giant, giant ones are six feet. You could probably extrapolate then that this one is 20, uh, 36 feet long, but you're too busy trying to avoid being bitten to extrapolate much of anything. I hit it. It spears my bone with one poisonous long leg. Ouch. Well, let's clobber it. You clobber your opponent harder than a cobbler, cobbler clobbers a nail, dealing 31 damage. Already sort of thirsty, you set out to explore the vast and trackless wastes. As you're about to collapse in dehydration, you stagger over one last dune to discover a verdant oasis. Just what you needed. Ultra Hydrate in 10 adventures. Desert Exploration, 1%. Oh, boy. Fighting a rock scorpion. As you're traipsing through the desert, you see a rock. But it isn't a rock. It's a rock scorpion. The biggest, baddest, and most muscular of all scorpions. It's known for arching one eye attacks and secretes a natural oil, so it's always shining and glistening. If you're not careful, it'll cut you in half in a very unpleasant way. Oh my god. It's the Scorpion King starring Rock the Dwayne Johnson. See a cool rock formation you never saw before. You're fighting a cactuary. This is a surprisingly anim animated, weirdly two-dimensional saguaro cactus. That is impressive command of the mathematics of risk assessment. <laughs> if consulted, it would say the risk you're incurring by attacking is not with the potential reward you might reap. But you don't have time to consult it before it attacks you. <laughs> uh, Tober trips your opponent. You win the fight. You got a bit of cactus. All right. I'm going to be uh, a little salty if I just have to explore like a hundred turns worth of the environment. This is an awesome thing. You drink the gravy. What the hell's wrong with you? Well, I only got two fullness for 500 and 71 views. Indeed. This is good food. You eat the tofurgulate for some reason. You feel briefly at one with nature and superior to you, your carnivorous fellow adventurers. The feeling wears off when the aftertaste hits, though. All right. Perfectly comfortable with that. Let's get rid of these. 
coconut shell. Oh, I can make cocktails out of that. That's interesting. Just put some mayo on me. Another giant, giant centipede. It coils itself around you and gives you a hundred simultaneous movies. Ugh. You're finding a plaque of locusts. <laughs> this is a big plaque embossed with pictures of notable locusts throughout history. It's surprisingly animated for a plaque and looks pretty angry. Uh, you see your black sword one painted red, so you stab it for 93 damage. It falls over and crushes you beneath it, turning your fingers to dust. Honey dip locusts. Handful of sand. <laughs> well hydrated, you continue your efforts to explore the vast sand. You walk her a few miles in one direction and follow your footprints back. So ultra hydrated. Now the giant centipede. 11. Torbert bashes into your opponent, doing 10 damage. It's ridiculous, it's not even funny. Alright. See another oasis in the distance, but it turns out to be a Rurage. So now we have the oh, an oasis. You're fighting a blur. Try as you might, you can't seem to get your eyes to focus on this thing. It's vaguely anthropomorphic, but it looks like those t-shirts that try to convince you you're drunk. Or, like, t-shirts look like when you're drunk. You get the jump on it. Oh my god. Blur away. Go to hell. <laughs> it checks your head like a jumbo jet. Like, everything it isn't easy. Well, that was a waste. You're finding a swarm of fire ants. This is a swarm, but tiny, but dangerous ants. They're about as... They're angry about being native to a sweltering desert, and they plan to take it out on anyone who gets near them. Some debate, there is some debate among adventures of the Loathing and Tomorrow's Guild about what to call a group of these things. Some say a swarm of fire ants, while others suggest an ouch, ow, damn it, ow of fire ants would be more appropriate. That's fair. I've had a battle fire ants before. You're fighting a stuffing golem. This is a golem comprised entirely of bread cubes, herbs, and celery soaked in turkey broth. At least it doesn't have any apple slices in it. Man, that's nasty. Tupper forgets what eight was for and does nothing. It kicks you with one leg, but soggy bread is not the most effective weapon. Yeah, that's fair. We got herbal stuffing. What is the sound of one herbal stuffing? Well, it depends. If you drop it on the floor, it's pretty much of a sh sound. It's a mixture of soggy bread, celery, and herbs. It's supposed to be stuffed into anything before you eat it. Don't get any weird ideas. Damn. Anything else I can shout out here? Crescent roll? Plain bagel? Not too full for a plain bagel? Where is some of my tater tots then? Another rock scorpion. It impales your giblets with its venomous tail. We got two handfuls of sand. Whoa. Already sort of thirsty, you set out to explore the vast and trackless wastes. Dry as a bone, you stumble blindly through the desert until you get caught in a sandstorm. The winging, the stinging, whirling sand gives you a really deep exfoliation. When you're done, you're just skin and bones, only without the skin. Turn into a skeleton. All attributes minus 50. You've been thankfully temporarily stripped down to your bare bones. The stripped down bare bones approach to life may be financially viable, but it's inconvenient and painful. So we go back to the oasis. Ah, oh, jeez. Well, I could just go here. Actually, I'm going to cut the episode here. I'll come back right here and read this. Uh, I've been Alfred. This has been Human Loathing. Play this game yourself. Remember to brush your teeth. If you don't remember, uh, just use mouthwash.